Hello. In this video, I'm going to go over exactly what a cybersecurity analyst does. I've gotten several cybersecurity job offers for the job title of cybersecurity analyst, and these job duties varied significantly. Cybersecurity analyst is a catch all title. In this video, I'm going to go over the three types of roles that I see fall underneath a cybersecurity analyst. I'm going to go in a demo for each one of these by educating yourself on these three different types of roles. You'll be able to better negotiate because you'll know exactly how valuable those skills are on the market. What exactly are these roles? So the first one is a soft analyst. The second one is an information security analyst. And the third one is a GRC analyst. The first cybersecurity analyst job title or job duty roles is a SOC analyst. This stands for Security Operations Center Analyst. A Security Operations Center or SOC is a centralized unit that is monitoring all of the resources on the network and is detecting and analyzing that traffic to see if anyone is trying to, number one, break in or has already broken into the environment. Oftentimes, the SOC will be in three different tiers, tier one, two, and three, or junior, mid, and senior. These people are going to be analyzing security incidences, going through events and logs and doing log analysis, working with a SIM to maybe find attacks correlated with the, the specific log that they're looking at, calibrating with other cybersecurity teams to remediate findings that they might find, and then maintaining and updating incident playbooks. This is where you're going to see job titles like threat analyst, incident response, digital forensics, malware analysis, a SOC manager. Let's get into a demo of what you would do as a SOC analyst. We are in Security Onion right now, which is an intrusion detection system, and you can ingest your logs from your hosts, networks, databases, files into Security Onion. And ideally, you're going to have something like this, and this is the dashboard. So oftentimes on job descriptions for cybersecurity analyst or SOC analyst, you're going to see that they talk about dashboards. Super useful information. So you see, I have had attacks on this, so that's why you see all of this data. It, this isn't a production environment at all. This is just me playing around with the best tool ever. We have destinations, we have different occurrences, we have host data, we have event module. This is important because it shows where it's coming from network. You could be customizing this for what you need to do for it. So that's good to know. Also, you have the alerts. The alerts is where you're going to go and then sort through false positives or if it's an actual real event. Now, there are jobs that you're just going to be doing this. So you need to be careful unless you want to just go through false positives all day long. You do need to choose a company where you're going to gain experience in a lot of different things, such as malware analysis, maybe even troubleshooting different systems, writing reports. So that's why it's important to also vet what exactly you're going to be doing as a SOC analyst. It, we can even drive down and drill down into these, and then I can look at the log. So Security Onion puts the log in a really nice and pretty Way. A lot of times the logs are not this pretty or nice. So you have your destination IP, you have your event module, which is Siricata, which is the network. You have where it's coming from. So it's file B. So this is probably a log that I created maybe. And then you have the network data decoded. And then on top of that, we can also go to actions and then say, you want to analyze this further. You can also go into say Cyber Chef and then analyze it with this tool. This is great for log analysis and malware analysis to an extent. And then we have the rules where this is coming. So emerging threats. So you may have different signature sets. This is different based on what tool you're using. So F5 has their own attack signature sets. So you may be using theirs, it highly dependent on the system. So we can even go to that document. That's basically what going through alerts are and triaging alerts are. So it's also by severity. So look, we have a high alert that could be malware right here. Sinkhole, DNS, sinkhole. 
look, we have a policy PDF with an embedded file. We're going to want to drill down on that and look at it more deeply. This definitely looks suspicious. And so you're going to want to escalate it. And that is called triaging tickets. Yeah, so here is the emerging threats. And this, these are attack signature IDs that are matching that traffic with known attacks. A large portion of what your job is going to be analyzing different alerts. And maybe you'll be going and hunting. But at that SOC analyst level one, you probably aren't going to be doing that much threat hunting. I hope that gave you a better idea of what exactly goes on as a SOC analyst. This one is actually the lowest paying one on my list. Lately, I've been seeing a SOC analyst around the sixty dollars to $75,000 range in America remote. The next title that is often lumped under cybersecurity analyst is an information security analyst. A lot of people get this mixed up with a SOC analyst, and sometimes companies also get these mixed up. Job titles are often just made up. A SOC analyst works at a SOC, and information security analyst works more with vulnerability management and a lot more paperwork. Essentially, these people are going to be doing vulnerability scans with a tool such as Nessus. They're going to be conducting risk assessments and ad identifying potential weaknesses within an organization. They're going to be enforcing those security policies and standards and ensuring compliance is being met with rules and regulation. For an entry-level role, this is more of an information junior security analyst or an IT security specialist. And then for mid-level, maybe a security engineer, a vulnerability analyst. Then you have management level, so an information security manager or a security program manager. The difference between an information security analyst and a SOC analyst is a SOC analyst is more focused on monitoring attack traffic and triaging alerts, where an information security analyst is focused more on the broader aspect. This also pays a little bit better if you're already working in a banking industry or a healthcare industry and say you're a nurse or you're a mortgage loan officer, moving into an information security analyst position is actually going to be a little bit easier than moving into a SOC analyst position. The reason being is you're already really familiar with those regulations in those highly regulated industries. This is a, a fantastic role to go with. Let's get into what a day-to-day -day life in an information security analyst may be, which is a lot different than a day-to-day -day life in a SOC analyst. So the first thing is you're going to under need to understand conducting risk assessments and vulnerability scans to identify potential weaknesses. A really good for conducting risk assessments is this right here. So here's a risk management plan example. So you're going to have a threat, vulnerability, asset and consequence, risk and solution. So asset management is really important and knowing exactly what is on your network is important. And there's eight steps. So that's asset management. And then you're going to need to identify potential consequences that you may do within that. Right here, it may be unavailable if you're going to go through this change. Possibly that could happen. Or your website might go and then you're going to have to pay like $50,000. You could also be identifying threats and their severity. Oftentimes, if you do a vulnerability scan, this is already done for you. Every time I'm at work and I have to make a change or anything like that, I do have to go through a risk assessment process and it looks exactly like this. So if there's an event such as a network outage, how do I get that back online? And then why did that occur? And how can I not do that in the future? So every change I have to make, I have to go through the risk mitigation process. So this is a lot of what an information security analyst will do. Now, there are many different ways to find vulnerabilities. Oftentimes on the technical side, you're going to be doing vulnerability scans. And I actually have one set up. <laughs> this is a open boss, which is a open source vulnerability scanner. And the reason I chose this was because it is free. Commercial products such as Nessus sometimes take money, but Nessus is the most common. The concepts are still the same. If I want to do a scan, I could just easily go to new task, 
create a task unnamed. What am I scanning? This is usually your IP address or if you already have it in. So then I'll schedule it once. And then the scanning fig, I want, say, full and fast. So save. I actually have it set this up. Usually this will give you a report. I didn't unname it, but of the vulnerabilities on that system. So if we go to CVEs, you're going to see a bunch of like CVEs. And if we have that vulnerability on our system, it's going to show up here. That is something that you might be doing a lot as an information security analyst is doing scans and then building reports on these scans and also doing risk assessments on various assets that you have and the risk that it takes. Alternatively, there are CIS controls and you could be going through and doing inventories on these types of things. So inventory and control of enterprise assets, secure configuration, audit logs, email and browser protections. And these are the top 18 critical security controls. Now there is NIST 800-53 but nobody honestly really reads NIST 800-53 unless they're going to work for the federal government. Another thing that you may be doing is going through different policies and procedures as an information security analyst and making sure that they're all up to date. Uh, so if you're someone who really enjoys paperwork, this is absolutely great for you because you can go through these and then let's open one up. And then here are like different policies and basically you're going to make sure that these are correct and in correlation with business needs. And so you may be just be doing that all day long and making sure that these are being enforced by your company. Those are the main duties that you may do as a information security analyst. Now the next role that falls underneath a cybersecurity analyst and also pays the most is a governance risk and compliance analyst. GRC is making sure IT goals align with business goals and that the company is following regulations put on it by the government. You may work in just risk and be a risk assess and do risk related things. You could just work in compliance. You could also just work in governance and do those policies. Some other job titles that fall under GRC analysts is maybe an auditor. If you're at the executive level, it could be a chief information security officer. And so for an example of something that we're going to do, let's go into PCI DSS. GRC analysts are going to be largely working with rules, laws, and regulation and making sure that business is within compliance and that their risk is mitigated. So people keep on asking me about PCI and becoming a qualified security assessor, and that is definitely a possibility. So here is PCI DSS. You have the overview of the PCI requirements and you have different security controls. Now, as I had said earlier, security controls are based on the NIST 800-53, but each industry adopts them to their own liking. For instance, a security control is is to protect cardholder data and sensitive authentication data wherever it is processed and stored. And so they need to main sh make sure that their firewall configuration is in place and it even gives you like an architecture of that. This is pretty basic. So they, they need to have a firewall, basically. Second one, don't use default systems for system passwords. Protect, that's a pretty easy one and then it goes in it really just goes deep into how you can do this by different industry and industry standards maintain a vulnerability management program so what i had just showed you earlier with open boss that is part of a vulnerability management so that could be implementing an ids it could be implementing antivirus software which is endpoint it could be a variety of things. And again, it depends on what the industry is. You can take a look at this. It's just PCI standards and you can get it on their website. And they have a lot of good information there. And I found this checklist and I thought it was so good because it kept things super simple and fun. So here we go is install and maintain a firewall configuration to protect cardholder data. So you're going to have a checklist like this. This is really good because it 
goes into the governance part. You need formal documentation of this. And then it also goes into what are the, exactly the standards of this. And then you notice it's document the review every six months. Are they auditing their governance program? Really important. A lot of companies don't have good paperwork. And then we also have the implementation requirements. So you see we're going to configure and implement firewall rules and settings. This is more of the technical side right here. And then you also have more of the policy and processes. Do they have these all in place? And then as a qualified security assessor, you're going to be going into these companies and auditing them to make sure that they are in compliance. And if they are not in compliance with PCI DSS, they can get charged millions upon millions of dollars. Here's mapping PCI DSS to the NIST cybersecurity framework. Everyone is trying to make an attempt to have a standardized regulation among different industries. But as you can see, you have asset management, and then it's what is this map to? And you have different subcategories here. Keep in mind that job titles vary from company to company. I've seen a penetration tester be called a cybersecurity analyst. This was just the most common three. There are tons of other roles within cybersecurity that may also fall underneath this. So keep that in mind. Job titles differ from company to company. And also, if you're interested in advancing your career in cybersecurity, I do have a completely free masterclass below where I walk you through the exact steps that you need to take to advance your career. It's totally free and you can find that in the link below. I will see you there. Bye.